Load balancer and API gateways. Very important terms, very important concepts in the microservices or distributed architecture. We cannot think of the microservices architecture without understanding or knowing load balancer and API gateways. At the same time, most of the time their responsibility gets confused when you start discussing with your peers and software engineers. I have seen in the interviews uh, when we ask this question, people get confused that what is the responsibility of the load balancer and what is the responsibility of the API gateway, how we can differentiate it. On this channel itself, I have uploaded a couple of videos around this one and there has been also, uh, there also I have seen questions around this that what the responsibility of each one. So this video is to uncover all those doubts and questions and get the practical understanding of this one. So let's get started. API Gateway acts as an intermediary between clients and collection of backend services. It handles all of the traffic between the clients and the backend services. It provides a single entry point for all API requests and it also Apart from the single entry point for all backend services, it also offers additional features such as rate limiting, authentication, caching. We can put logging also on API Gateway label because that is the single entry point to our backend services. What about load balancer? Load balancer is even more easy. It distributes incoming network traffic across multiple servers which helps prevent any server from becoming overwhelmed with the request so it is obvious right so there is one person there is one instance doing some job but if there is huge workload and it cannot handle that so we should replicate that so we should increase the number of persons or number of instances for working and distribute the load among them that's what the job of the load balancer so I am here, so we have this hypothetical use case where we have product microservice and uh, we have order microservices. So for simplicity, let's consider about these two microservices only and here is client. Here we have front-end application, any third-party service that wants to make a call to our product or order microservices. So we also know that there is a huge traffic coming up on our microservices. So at any point of time, there will be more than one instances of each microservices that auto scaling, uh, auto up scaling or auto down scaling will always be in place. So if the load is not there, there will be less number of instances and if load is high, there will be more number of instances. So I can just uh, make the multiple instances of this one just pasting this one so it will just uh, give an indication that there are different instances more than one instances so my question is uh, any client is there if they want to interact with the product and order microservices how they will interact it so the straightforward question if in very layman term we can say that product microservices had its own address ports order has its own address and port and clients can call directly but that adds the complexity i am not going to that label we already have seen api gateway is a single entry point right so that's what we are going to put here this is what api gateway is api gateway will work as a single entry point for all the clients for all the and this API gateway this API gateway will have uh, details about the product microservices and it will have details about uh, order microservices and any other microservices that will come into play so how when when now the next question is how clients will uh, indicate to API gateway that it has to call the product microservices or order microservices. Let's say uh, we have uh, our API gateway dot com. This is the address of the API gateway and now it has to call the product. So how it will know? So actor also 
give some context that context comes in the url itself that product or it can say that it wants to call the order based on that api gateway routes the request to different microservices this is important to understand it based on the context it routes the request between different microservices whose responsibility is different like products responsibility is different order re responsibility is different now coming to the next point uh, here is the load balancer part product has more than one instance so it will be running on its own instances on its own port so how api gateway will determine all these instances uh, where it is running same goes with the order microservices as well how it will keep record of those micro, those individual instances because at any point of time in a distributed architecture new instances will be coming up or existing instances will be going down that health check and all that will be feeling so one option is that this all thing api gateway can do it can make a table it can keep a record of all the instances and uh, it can take the responsibility of registering the new instances also but see we saw the api gateway has a uh, specific responsibilities any request coming it has to go through the authentication it has to go to the late rate limiting caching and all that responsibilities so if we add this load balancer responsibility to this that is like overwhelming and load balancer is also not a straightforward load balancer has different algorithm also sometimes it wants just randomization around that round robin it can do sometimes it needs to uh, it needs to route the request to a specific instance only when we have a sticky session kind of thing so that in memory instances and if any token we have stored on individual instance that can be taken care accordingly sometimes we want to take into account the load on the individual instances because uh, sometimes compute is intensive requests are there so they need uh, at that point of time load balancer needs to take into account the load that individual instances have apart from the number of requests that it has processed that is why we have to have one more service one more setup for the load balancing part right so all of these instances that are there so they are not directly exposed to the api gateway but they are via this api this load balancer same goes with the order microservices as well so a sorry so api gateway has address of this load balancer let's say product service dot com or load balancer uh, the, this load balancer will be order service dot com something yeah order service port something dot com right so this load balancer now will have the responsibility to uh, keep healthy instances on the back end of this one api gateway doesn't have to worry about this one it just have to call the load balancer address and it will be taken care now this is important question like uh, if if i remove this one here this one also this one also mm, just just remove this for a second here and question is like we have this setup uh, setup backend services and a client so how many api gateway and how many load balancer do i need in our setup that is a very important question throughout the company there will be only one api gateway so uh, there will be there can be two api gateways for the mobile clients web clients that is the different case but for the entry point there will be only one api gateway the load balancer as many microservices as many different microservices are there there will be as many load balancers like this one different like from uh, many load balancer i meant they will have its own address and port uh, which we can uh, we can indicate to go to just to conclude this one uh, let's see some point wise differences about load balancer and api gateway first one is the function wise differences it distributes the incoming traffic across multiple instances of a service it manages the routing and processing of api requests from clients that is single entry point what is the scope it typically operates at a network or transport layer and it operates at the application layer providing additional services so this is the transport layer differences that it has and also 
if we talk about the different uh, like types of the load balancer there are two like client side and server side load balancer but you have you will never see about api gateway that there is client side api gateway and server side api gateway there is only one it is like setting uh, we can say it is a middleware something entry point to the uh, entire backend services protocol you can see it supports http tcp and udp api gateway it supports http is uh, http or https protocols only so that secure is also here uh, that is obvious routing it directs traffic based on the network label criteria such as ip address or the load on the backend services that based on the algorithm that we apply on the load balancer it routes the request based on that and that routing request is on the different instances of the same microservice not different microservices it directs traffic based on the application label criteria such as that we saw the context the features it offers features of the load balancing health check uh, if any service coming up any service going down all those records are taken care by the load balancer only and api gateway it provides feature authentication caching logging rate limiting or any other that we want to apply when any api request is coming uh, from the public to our backend services these load balancer and api gateways functionality is so generic that they are provided by the third party and we don't have to always code or write the entire pieces ourselves there are open sources providing that freely available we can use it and uh, by setting it up on our own there are paid or commercial provider also that we can uh, take help and will get the support for each and everything we just have to use that so let's see those examples so i have created the table for this one just to make it clear these are the top api gateway provider i just have uh, Uh, make make the list of this one so this is the open source provider of the api gateway kong this one this one so just this is the just listing that you can go through this this is the load balancer provided that is there so the commercial providers are like from the aws apache kong azure is there so every cloud provider uh, gives the commercial offering around this one so this is the load balancer offering that is there when we go in the interview what sort of questions can be expect so the, this final slides i have put so i want you to just pause it and go through these question and see if you can answer all of this what is load balancer some common algorithm some consideration when choosing the load balancer and how do load balancer ensure high availability fault tolerance what is the difference and how do you monitor the performance and health of these balancers and how do you scale a load balancer can you give an example of scenario where you would have you would have used the load balancer coming to the api gateway similar like what is an api gateway very generic question what are some common features how api gateway handles traffic routing how are some common security concerns addressed by api gateway how do you optimize performance of the api gateway can explain the differences of between api gateway and service mesh how do you monitor the performance can you give an example of a scenario uh, that this is the very pet question like give an example where you would have used an api gateway so think of the project that you were working on and how api gateway set up there how would you handle authentication so we have seen that authentication caching rate limiting is taken care by the api gateway but but how it is taken care is the important question so these are the follow up questions that uh, that come while you are going in the interview and in discussion mode how do you how to implement caching and how to manage api versioning so now let's see some scenario wise questions so first one is you have a microservice based application with several services that need to be exposed through a public api how do you design the api gateway and load balancing architecture to ensure scalability and high availability this question is somewhat that we have just explained with the architecture that how do you put the api gateway and the load balancer your next one is the your application experiences spikes in traffic during certain times of the day how do you configure the load balancer and api gateway to handle this increased demand try to think of this one and come up with the solution the next one is the you have a service running in the multiple regions around the world how do you use a load balancer and api gateway to route traffic to the appropriate region and handle failover in case of regional outages the next one is the your organization is transitioning from a monolithic application to a microservice based architecture 
How do you use a load balancer and API gateway to ensure smooth migration and seamless integration with the legacy system? You want to optimize the performance or of your APIs by caching responses. How do you use an API gateway to implement caching and ensure cache consistency across multiple instances of the same services? How do you design a distributed architecture with multiple instances of backend services behind a load balancer and an API gateway? We just have seen that example that can answer uh, this question is answered by that only. How do you troubleshoot performance issues with the load balance or API gateway? So that was it that I had uh, on this uh, very popular interview questions and discussion about uh, load balancer and API gateway. Let me know if you are comfortable with all of these questions I just explained in last slides. If you want me to make a follow up video where I can explain uh, the answer of each of these one, let me know in the comment section. I'll do that as well in further in, in some next video as per the response that I get. So that was it about uh, this load balancer API gateway discussion. I hope you found it useful. If that is the case, do consider hitting that thumbs up and share button. Thank you for your time. Bye bye. See you next time.